Hi, I'm Joel and I'm a business consultant success coach and I've just been debunking the myth that there's such thing as an overnight success on the online prosperity show. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today I've brought you the business coach and consultant, Joel. Joel, how are you doing, my friend? Fantastic, mate. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, viewers, if you're watching this part of the show, you would understand that we are all on a journey to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you would also understand that none of that happens overnight. So that's the reason why I've brought in Joel, who has over 25 years of experience um, in the business front. First of all, as a businessman himself, and then, um, you know, working with other people so that he can also help them out throughout their journey. Now, we had a bit of a chat earlier on and um, the biggest topic that kept uh, popping up was the meat that everybody else thinks they can do it overnight. Or they could just show up, uh, put a video out like this or put out a status on Facebook and call themselves an entrepreneur. But that's not it. So with the, you know, following 20 minutes, we're going to be looking at the myth of the overnight success. And we're also going to delve into what um, people are actually doing, what sort of steps um, and what sort of processes are people meant to be taking so that they can actually magically gain, um, you know, the, 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 the success that they're looking for, you know, overnight. <coughs> and it does uh, take 21 years to be 21 years old as you would uh, notice, we unfold with Joel here. Now, Joel, I could go on and on and on. Um, the person who's watching this video right now is probably glazing their eyes because they want the nugget or that quick formula or that instant boost or that six minute ab so that they can just go on to the next shiny object. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you, um, you, know, you got to where you are today, Joel. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, uh, okay. So going back when I was uh, like early twenties, like before I was twenty, actually, I started working uh, in a family business. It was a grocery store, like a supermarket, and really, I got put in there because uh, things weren't going very well. And I think I was just put there as a caretaker until the the, the, the ship sunk. It, I don't think it was it was expected to uh, to to succeed. So. Uh, this is where the overnight success part happened. Uh, you know, like basically for the next uh, 15 years, I refused to let this business go down. And my goodness, like I had, like there were some trying times that like nearly every week, like we were within $50 sometimes of going broke uh, for many, many years. Like it was so close and, you know, but I slowly but surely with no experience, had no idea. All I'd done was some accounting. And I hadn't even finished that uh, at that stage. So I just knew how to count a till. And um, pretty much I learned on the job uh, all the way. So I guess it, that's what happened. Uh, so I took that business. If you want to talk numbers, it was in a huge amount of debt. And there was no way that it was profitable. And the turnover was really, really low. It was, um, it, there was no way it was getting out. And just through tenacity and just, working my backside off and and just really just using the mentality that i would rather be uh i was either going to be waving from the top or dead on the side of the road <laughs> that i was going to get there and um yeah and like so for 10 to 12 years it was a real struggle like it was really 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 strong like and they say it takes 10 years to become a success an overnight success i was even slower than that you know so i guess what that business went from was like barely making a dollar and it ended up getting to the point where it was over a 10, $10 million a, a, a year. And I remember the first time I didn't even know that I'd made over a million dollars in a quarter actually and in, in the business. And I was so shocking because the accountant came and said, congratulations. I'm like, what for? <laughs> Cause I just working so hard. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, yeah. And then, we ended up, so like when I took over, it was doing under 20,000 a week. And when I left, uh, our best week was like $300 shy of uh, like 200,000 in a week. So that was really, really great. And yeah, it took me 16 years to get there. So there's my overnight success. 
Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that story there, Joel. Now, within the story um, that you've just told us right now, there's a few words that you kept weaving in, um, a lot to do with learning and work. And I also uh, picked up on you saying you did not know how to do this. Now, let's go to learning first, because we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. What sort of lessons would you say the last, the 16 years uh, taught you up until you turned around this business, um, you know, to, in the way that, that, that it did? <laughs> That's a great question. Look, the one thing that I've learned the most is that don't let the fact that you don't know how to do something stop you from going and doing it. Follow your dream. Go do it. Like my dream was to be a really successful businessman. I didn't want to let the fact that I couldn't do it yet, I didn't know how to do it, stop me from doing it. Like it's scientifically proven that the fastest way to learn anything is to go out and do it. You know, like you can read a, a thousand books on how to swim but you can't swim until you jump in the pool. So you want to learn how to swim, jump in the pool. <laughs> so take action. And like, I've got so many references from successful people and Grant Cardone's one of them. Like I really follow that guy. And he just says like, uh, you know, entrepreneurs starve in the thinking. It's just speed action and, and get things happening. And I don't want to sell that that is like the, the, the gateway drug to success, but taking action you, like the healing is in the doing. So like, that's, that's my lesson. Like if you decide you want to do something and you get the urge to do something, you know, like five, four, three, two, one, go out and do it. It's, it's, it could be the universe telling you to do the thing that you need that you put here to do. So just go and do it. Absolutely. Learn on the job. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And, um, and, 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 and that, that is absolutely true because you, you're not going to get results until you've actually, um, you know, started moving the needle or doing the, the work that's needed. Now, you didn't know what to do in, in all this time. You just jumped into it. Were you not afraid? Because fear really happens to be the biggest, um, you know, deterrent to people achieving their dreams. They could want to do it. They could read the books, like you said, and just fear of jumping into the pool um, then stops them from taking the action that you're talking about. Um, walk us through how you maybe eliminate the, the fear or was it just um, first time luck? Look, uh, I, I, there was a point um, in my story where uh, I lost everything. I through no physical fault of my own, but it was my responsibility. I was there. Be take responsibility. That's another gold nugget everything in your life but i lost everything and i've actually been able to 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 get back again and so like uh like i i actually when i had to make the second jump i really questioned whether i had beginner's luck the first time or whether it was because i had more support behind me and and it was a really it was really challenging but you know the way i beat that fear was i just found a bigger fear and a fear of regret the fear of getting to the end of my life, running out of time and not being that person that I was put here to be. Not having the success, not having the experiences. I'm way more frightened of that than looking silly or failing in a business. Like it's not the end of the world. Nothing is permanent except the day we get the call to move to the next life and we run out of time. That's everything else is negotiable in the middle and you can put that off as long as you can too. You know, so like, that's how I beat it. I just found something I was more frightened of and I'm more frightened of regret. And then I am of having to go out of business. Like, you know, just jump in. That's how Absolutely. we go. Absolutely. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Fill, fill the fear and do it anyway, right? Yeah, just go do it. Absolutely. No, but Joel, you know what I mean? Look at you. You probably have the smarts. You did accounting before. And, um, you know, you, somebody would have set up the business for you and you probably had the support network for you to actually, uh, go in and experiment. Um, a lot of people don't quite have that structure within their business. They could be starting a business and their wife is not equally supporting them, um, for the fact that they need to be paying bills or their husband is thinking that they should stop. Um, you know, market, m playing around on, 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 online and actually go out and create something so that their family can have a happier existence. Now, you had support. For those people that don't quite have that, what would you 
say, um, you know, would be their way around that? Or would that <coughs> just be an <coughs> Okay, so first of all, if you've got a partner or someone that's holding you back, uh, take responsibility because that's you giving your power up to someone else. And you'll never, like, I don't believe you can be successful if you make a habit of giving your power away. That's blaming someone else. I want to really get people onto the, on board with taking responsibility for themselves. Step two would be, you need to be so sold on what you're doing and so strong in the belief that people want to jump in the boat with you. And you need to sell that belief to your partner because it is going to be a struggle. And I don't like to use that word, but it will be challenging for you to succeed. Uh, you know, got to fix my language uh, to if you don't have your partner on board, if you don't have your support crew, you know, and, and no one is a self-made man or woman. Everyone needs support. You need a team of people backing you up and that's how you really compound your, your success. So yeah, I would definitely, you, you just got to pull them aside. If it's your, if it's, if it's an intimate partner, well, that's, that's more challenging. Uh, you know, speak to them, get them on board, tell them that, you know, and a way that you could do it is respect practicality. You don't need to burn the boats and quit your job to go do this. You can work on your side hustle while you're still paying the bills with your other job. You know, many entrepreneurs do that. You know, you don't have to believe the whole, you know, the whole like scenario that you need to just burn the boats and quit your job because you want to like avoid pain because it'll come anyway. You don't need to add it yourself. So, so that's something I do. And then the other thing is like, you don't need to put in, there's so many businesses out there that, that are ready made. You know, there's, there's so many systems out there that you can, you can go like there's, there's affiliate marketing, network marketing. There's so many digital ways as you, you know, you can make, you can start a podcast. You can do all these things to create wealth. You just got to think outside the box. And like where I have, if I was to go back into supermarkets, that would be half a million bucks without any sweat that I'd have before I even open the doors. You can start a business now for 200 bucks. There's no cost of entry. We've all been evened out. You don't need money to make money. You need courage. Courage is how you make money in this age. Absolutely. Now, all of this is well and truly good. Um, but in as much as we are affected by at least to some of the people that are around us and you know, there's not that many people in Australia, 27 million, if I stand corrected, uh, 2 million of which are small to medium businesses. So that means probably one in every 10 to 15 people is plus or minus starting their own business. And how many would you have around you? You know what I mean? So your environment basically would constitute um, what goes, um, you know, on um, as part of your mindset to uh, formulating your ideas and the tenacity to to, to stay in with your business. Now, Joel, we did mention a little bit earlier on uh, about stuff that is in the media and maybe is getting close to text time and the media starts talking about how small, medium businesses um, you know, are supposed to pay so much tax and then that scares you. And then you hear about companies shutting down and you're like, these companies have been in business for a long time. Who am I to withstand all of that? How important is the influences um, you know, especially environment and media towards, um, you know, expectations that people would now just anticipate that everything has to happen instantly now or nothing. Yeah, well, it's really, it's really uh, interesting. Like I could go on all day about the media. I can really tell you, I, I have strong beliefs around the media. I believe that you should stop watching the news straight away. That should be the first thing you do. Uh, and I also believe that they're designing to keep you down. They don't want people to, to, to free themselves from the system and the system of just going to work, spending 40 years in a job, pay your tax and stay like stay with their foot on your head. They don't want people to be free because the free people can make choices. So I don't listen to anything I don't want to believe in. So that's one thing I've seen, like how many people have told Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, all these massive like success stories that we all see that they couldn't do it you ask them there'd be thousands of people like i've got people in a network marketing company that i'm uh, involved in that have been told no <laughs> hundreds of hundreds thousands tens of thousands of time 
but they didn't believe it. So believe in what serves you and what serves most people is to live the life that you're designed to have and the life of your dreams and don't let anyone discourage you from that, you know? So, so yeah. And, and as far as environment, my goodness, the number one thing that you can do is check your peer group because your results will reflect directly from the expectations of your peer group. So if you get into a peer group and uh, of fit people and you're unfit, you will naturally want to get fit. If you're in a peer group that is naturally successful at business, well then they're going to expect you to be successful at business and you're going to expect that from yourself. So if you've got armchair people, you know, like how far do you have to look? You know, Uncle Billy from down the road saying that real estate's not, it's not a good time to get into real estate. It's not a good time to get into business. It's the sky's falling. There are so many armchair people that will tell you why you shouldn't do something. But really just consider, are they a snapshot of what you want your future self to look like? And if they're not, ignore them. Their advice is flawed. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. You know, a lot of people would be asking themselves, okay, I've been doing this, I've done the work, I've blogged, I've podcasted, I've Snapchat, Snapchatted, I've storied, and why am I not there yet? Okay, well, like this is interesting because um, when I went, over to, I went over to America to, uh, to be coached by Grant Cardone and he stood on the, he stood on the uh, thing and he says, you need to get attention. So get attention. And like we asked him some questions. He says, it's hard. It's tough. It's brutal. He says, do you know how hard it is when you're doing a Facebook live for two years straight and you never get anyone on? There's only two people on there. There's only, you know, so he says, but that's where, that's why most people won't succeed because they give up. You know, you could be giving up two millimeters before you're about to get that one person on, you know, like anyone that's familiar with the Gary V story, he did wine line, library tv for so thousands of hundreds and hundreds of episodes but one day a guy from nbc happened to come across it and that nbc guy got him on conan o'brien and then now we have gary v yeah so keep going keep going keep going don't stop pivot that's my advice like pivot don't quit like believe the treasure's there and believe it will be worth it just keep going Great stuff. They say it takes 10,000 hours to be a master of your craft. And like you said, Gary V, yes, went in, did a thousand episodes and nobody knew who he was up until uh, that lucky strike, um, you know, came around. But luck, that only happens to people that are, uh, you know, that have paid their dues and that have respected the process. Now, when we see somebody with such massive success or, you know, our first response is to be saying, oh, lucky for him, I tried it. It was a scam anyways. What would you, <laughs> what would you say, um, you know, to people that um, say I've tried it all and um, are anticipating that they just have to do that one thing and then results are popping out on the other end of the bear <clears throat> belt? So um, what I say to those people, and they don't come near me very much anymore because they usually get this question, you've done everything. Okay, let's start listing everything you've done. And they're like, oh, well, I haven't done everything. How many things have you done? Oh, 20. Okay, let's list them. And then what really usually comes out is like they've tried five things for a little while. They've done it willy-nilly. And they, like you said, they haven't respected the process. And they expect results. Like, like Grant Cardone didn't buy his plane the day he started as a 25 year old, like in sales, he bought it three or four years ago. That's like what, 40 years of grinding and 40 years of like work. Come on. It's not going to happen overnight. It's definitely like, like it's just not, you're not going to just start a business and then fly and then like Facebook's going to buy you out. It's just it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, I, it's, uh, there goes my hopes for being the next opera then, Joel. Thank you so much. Oh, um, right. <laughs> in any case, if somebody has been watching this, uh, Joel, and is getting tremendous value from uh, this. Is there a group or is there a page that people you, um, you know, people that want to follow you and learn more from you can uh, jump onto so that they can learn a little bit more about, um, you know, the process and how to not think that everything happens overnight? <coughs> Okay, well, I've got a group, I've got a couple of groups, but like the one that I'm really focusing my attention on now is a group called on Facebook called Independent Hustle Training. 
And really that is just like we have two rules, no negativity and no selling. It's a safe place for entrepreneurs to come and get daily content and daily inspiration and like it's just a yes you can sort of environment. So like um, it, it's, it's, it's very small at the moment. We've kept it really closed and we've sort of been working out what we're going to do with it. But like really my, my passion is like getting these people like value that's worth way more than what people pay thousands of dollars for, you know? So that's what we do in there. So I have like entrepreneurs, first responders from nine 11. I've got like really solid success stories in there that deliver content. I've interviewed uh, Kira Gashley. We've got Aaron Ashley. We've got other big speakers coming and it's, it's people that have actually got success in their field that they can actually show the scoreboard for. You know, like there's a lot of people that claim the success, you know, you can go on Instagram and take a cool photo on holiday with a Lambo near you and borrow 10 grand off your dad and look like you're a, you got a, you got this system, but these people can actually back it up. These guys are paying the bills with what they say that they're, what they're teaching. So yeah, if that's interest anyone, I'm happy to, uh, you know, to, to have a chat with you. So yeah, be good. Great stuff. I mean, absolutely. This has been uh, phenomenal. And I think it's probably going to be among the ranks as one of our best episodes. Um, it was raw and it was so much full of value. Now, all said and done, we still, you know, anticipate re re results and the stuff that we're doing. Um, you know, somebody's just probably saying, ah, yeah, you guys can say that. I haven't got all that time in the world to wait for results. Is there some sort of habits or, you know, some sort of last sort of words that you can uh, instill onto that person and ask them to just wait until their time is there um, and then just keep plugging away and <coughs> it will be okay. Yeah. Okay. So remember that there's only, there's like everything leads back to this. You can control how you think and feel. And that's, that's fact. And you, for things to change first, I must change. So if you say that, and then for the people that don't have the time, just remember that that's just a story you're telling yourself because the truth is like the law, that's a, like a law that's in science is like that there's 24 hours a day. And um, if it's not violating a law, then it's a story that you're telling yourself. So in that 24 hours, only do high paying activities. Remember that if it's not high paying, it's not an activity that's worth doing, or maybe you should investigate whether it's worth doing. So high paying activities, you can create tremendous wealth of half an hour a day to begin with. So just to start that snowball effect happening, if you do high paying activities. So, you know, building a banner for your Facebook like group is not a high paying activity. Shaking hands with someone and talking to them about your business and saying that you're open for business is a very high paying activity. See the, the contrast? A lot of people get stuck in the, the make things pretty and get your branding and get all that done. That comes. Talk to people. Tell them you're open for business. Knock on the door. <laughs> Tell them you're open for business. That's it. Just do that. <laughs> Absolutely. And I really, really appreciate your time here. I just got one question for you there, Joel. Do you know how long it takes for somebody to be a pilot? I don't actually. I should because I want to be one. <laughs> Great. Okay. Would you know how long it takes for somebody to be a lawyer? A lawyer? Um, well, I've got lawyers in the family and they just keep, they just seem to be continually doing new courses. So a very long, like a long time. <laughs> yeah. Would you know how long it takes for somebody to be a doctor? A doctor? Oh, I, I'll guess eight years. Eight years. All right. So pretty much all these other professions is 888, which is pretty much what you've said. My question to you who's watching this show right now is why would you think being an entrepreneur takes you overnight? Thank you so much for tuning in.